Good morning everyone. Today we have on board with us is Dr. Saiful Arazadi. He's a renowned educator, a remarkable profession in intelligent systems and multimedia computing at the BSB Academic School of Engineering and Technology. He's a major contributor to the academic achievements and research and one of the Asia's top private education institutions, having earned dual PhDs from the University of Putra in Malaysia and the University of Wollongong, Australia. As a lecturer at the PSB Academy, Dr. Saiful currently teaches students about his vast expertise in various areas. We welcome you to the Academy this School, sir, for the small start rights. And I would like to ask you the questions. First, with me, uh, can you elaborate on the role of data science in uncovering the actual insights and driving informed decisions making across the data centers? Okay, uh, so data science is basically when we have historical data that we've collected over the years, and then we are going to get some insights from those data to help us with good decision making, better decision making. Uh, in comparison to when we don't have data, right? So it is a shame, uh, if you ask me, if you have big companies like uh, Uber here uh, that collects data all the time throughout the years and then is not using it at all. So that's not what they are using. They are doing. They are actually using this data to help them with better demographic uh, uh, segregation uh, to to see which uh, customers needs what and at what time and so on. Um, so not just Uber, all these big companies are leveraging themselves in the market because of data science. They are using data science. They have collected and after after the collection process, they use it for their own good uh, at the end of the and day. I think the company Profitable, yes. yeah, profit is, is the key. Thank you, sir. I'd like to move to the next question. What challenges do organizations commonly face Okay, um, so as, as uh, species, as yeah. human beings, we have this uh, protective nature, right? as that's human nature, we are protective of our own uh, details, uh, our personal details and also our family details, we want to protect everyone around us, that, that, mm -hmm. that uh, belong to us. So, um, this would be uh, that balance that these companies need to keep. So that people don't feel unsafe when they are taking this data from them, but at the same time they need to take this data, yes. right? Yeah. So that would be the biggest challenge, I would say. Okay. Yeah. And we have one question. That is, how does the ethical dimension of data science come into play, and what uh, measures should be taken to ensure response and unbiased use of data for intelligence purposes? Okay. Uh, so this relates back to the second question, yes. right? So, uh, in order for this big corporation uh, that wants to protect data from this, from personal or from a group or from an organization even, uh, they need to make sure they have the rules and regulations first that makes people want to give them consent to collect data. Uh, this goes right up to the top, to the government level. Like for example, the Singaporean government has this uh, AI governance framework uh, that says every organization or every person even that wants to put out an AI-based uh, system needs to be ETF uh, explainable. They need to explain everything that they are doing. Uh, transparent, they need to be transparent. And they need to be fair, fair ETF. So, uh, they need to do all this first and these rules and regulations are, like I said, uh, put forth by the government, Singaporean okay. government. So I'm pretty sure you have something similar in India as well. Yes. India is very big in AI as well yes. now. Um, and all the other countries in the world as well, they need to find out the, the fine tune of uh, making people safe, but at the same time providing good services. The right catch. Exactly, the balance. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving the insights no. data science. Uh, I would like you to share the experience of your career at Vivekan Business School and what are some of the recommendations, insights and suggestions you would like to give to our students to become the future managers and entrepreneurs. Okay, um, so to be a good manager, because I am also a program manager right now, uh, I think you need to have a lot of people's skills, soft skills. Okay. Yeah, you need to be very good in soft skills. And I don't think you are short of that uh, as 
far as I can see here um, in this tour, uh, every students that I have interacted with here has good soft skills and brilliant in talking as well. Um, the one thing that I would advise is don't try to reinvent the wheel. You know, that is the first invention of human beings. That's why the metaphor is there. Yeah. Not reinventing the wheel. Okay. You are using uh, whatever knowledge that is already there in the world okay. to solve real world problems, to solve problems that are close to you. Right? Sometimes people like to create uh, their own problem by trying to reinvent the wheel. Okay. Right? Trying to be the best colorful, uh, entertaining boss yes. uh, without following the rules and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, try not to do that, that would be my advice. Uh, the rules are there because there's a reason that the rules must be there. There must be order to be kept. But of course, you can put in some of your ideologies inside uh, when you are managing. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for your insights. And definitely, we need make sure we put this into our everyday lives and we definitely uh, from your speeches that we have heard in the auditorium we get an insight of it and we definitely do something great and we invent something good in the future as well. Yes. Thank you so much sir. Thank you for your precious time over here. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank no you so much. Sir. No.